Welcome to Wrong Time Watch. My name is Kevin, and today we're looking at my Seiko Tuna collection. Uh, well, Seiko Quartz Movement Tuna collection. I do have, actually just happen to have my Solar Tuna here. Uh, maybe we'll throw this in here, I don't know. This is my Seiko uh, SNE 499, I believe, uh, Patty solar tuna with an aftermarket um, metal shroud but yeah let's just throw this one over here to you what the heck so uh, this is the yellow fin tuna here uh, sbbn 027 this is a limited edition seiko patty tuna sbbn 039 and then this here is the new tuna the latest release, which is the SBBN043. This has the blue ceramic bezel and the blue uh, blue dial, also blue silicone strap. Hopefully you can see the blue and the black here. Actually, this one has a blue strap as well. So, let's talk about some of the differences of these here. Obviously, this one's quite a bit different, um, but this is not a limited edition. You can uh, go out and just uh, buy this today if you want. I've seen uh, prices vary on this. I've seen it some places for $2,100. I saw it um, at shoppingjapan.net for $1,800. So uh, this one here is about $1,800. SBBN 039. Price on it was... Somewhere around 1700 1700 but it's out of stock. Limited edition of 700 pieces. I actually seen some on eBay right now for $2,500. I think it's been there for a year, but anyway. Um, and then this one here, uh, current edition, current model, uh, is on Nomon. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. It's G-N-O-M-O-N.com. I believe they're out of Singapore uh, for $1,420. Oh, uh, this one too. I didn't actually write it in my notes. Um, I believe this is four or $500. I don't exactly remember. And that's with the plastic uh, shroud. And then this is the aftermarket metal shroud. It's about 100 bucks. So anyway, let's uh, put that one over there. I shall just throw this one off to the side. So uh, this is solar and it's a patty edition. It has a nice little wave pattern there. Four o'clock crown and in, uh, in the date window. So and this one is rated to 200 meter. Where is it at? Yeah, right there. Divers 200. So we'll get this one out of the way. Uh, also, that's a hard lux crystal and the bezel. The bezel insert feels like plastic and there's a loom here. So I may actually just leave this around, but we'll talk, won't talk about it anymore. Um, the bezel on this has a similar feel to this. It feels like plastic. It's um, yellow, obviously, which is a special color for Seiko. I guess they use that for racing partnerships. But you can see the minute hand on this is yellow. So this watch is very, uh, very cool. It's uh, water resistant to 1,000 meter, which is the highest water resistance watch I've ever had uh, in my possession. Probably the one I've ever seen too. I've never uh, seen one in the store that's uh, anywhere close to 1,000 meter. The closest one I had to this was uh, my Christopher Ward bronze, which is 600 meter water resistance. But Anyway, getting off track here. So cool thing about this is it has a ceramic shroud, which is going to be very scratch resistant. Uh, I would imagine that it's not going to be as impact resistant as stainless steel. But this watch is very cool. And it's got the titanium, um, it's called a monocoque, mono, monolithic. Uh, it's, it's a single, it's a single piece of titanium there the 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 way to change the battery is you have to take the crystal off and go from the top side i believe uh, take the bezel off maybe it unscrews i'm not exactly sure how that works but 
does not have a, a screw down case back. It has no case back. And this is more of a typical dive watch design with the screw down case back, 300 meter water resistant. So yeah, this watch is very cool. Uh, all three of these have silicone straps and um, really not a fan of silicone straps anymore, but uh, definitely will do the job. Great for a dive watch. So we talked about the prices. Let's talk about the crystal. This one has a flat sapphire crystal. This one has a domed hardlex crystal. Very nice dome to that. And then this one has a domed sapphire crystal. I could not see the dome uh, just looking at the top of this watch. So I don't know, but you can definitely see the distortion here. I don't know if this is domed from the other side or what, but and also it has uh, AR coating applied. Okay, so these two here are 300 meter water resistant. All three have the same movement, the Seiko Quartz 7C46 movement, a five-year battery life. Accuracy is stated to plus or minus 15 seconds per month, which doesn't really sound all that impressive to me for a quartz, but that's how it's listed for all three of these. All three also have LumaBright, so I'm really looking forward to checking out the Loom on these here. Um, I have heard that the Loom is not as good on the new model, but we'll see that in a moment. I like this hand too. It's got uh, a neat, hopefully you can see that there. Yeah, I can see how that wouldn't have as much loom on that minute hand. I'm not sure why they have that little T, uh, T shape in there. Hmm, be interesting to see the loom here. That bezel insert is very cool looking, nice and shiny. Actually, uh, shiny like that one there, so. If you guys haven't had a tuna or never experienced one, you should check them out. Even though they look really big or they sound really big on the specs, the lug to lug is really is uh, small. I wouldn't say really small, but it's smaller than you would expect uh, compared to the well, the diameter is essentially your lug to lug. But we'll talk about that in a moment. Actually, we'll talk about that uh, right now. Actually, before we get into the dimensions, I'm going to uh, get my scale and we'll weigh each of these since this is titanium with ceramic. All right, well, hopefully you can see the number on that. We'll go with the two seven first. So 119, 18 grams. Then the 39, SBBN 39. And how precise that is, 124. Let's just try this real quick. Yeah, so that's the same thing. And then do the new one, the 43. Let's put it on here like this. 128 grams. And then since I have the solar tuna here, we'll throw that one on too. 111 grams, so the lightest of the bunch. Imagine that. All right. Well, I grabbed my calipers as well, since I wasn't really planning on talking about this one, just to get a quick sense of the sizes of these. So, 46.8 uh, diameter thickness we're looking at 12.5 from the case back to that hardlux crystal crowns about 7.1 and then this should be 20 millimeter for the strap sorry 22 for the strap yep 22 so there's the specs for that one all right so let's go back to the SBBN27, looking at 49.1 diameter. This is 
quite a large watch. I wish I still had my um, Ecozilla. It would, it would be a, make a good comparison to that watch, but I sold that to actually Clayton picked that one up. Let's see. Yeah, actually, I uh, have my notes here for the Ecozilla in that. Um, case diameter on that was 48.4. Thickness on it, 18.4 thick with a 6.3 millimeter crown and 177 grams. And that compares to this at 49.1 diameter, 16.1 thick. 22 millimeter lug width. The Ecozilla doesn't have any lugs at all. It has an integrated uh, rubber strap. 7.9 millimeter crown. That Ecozilla is rated at 300 meter and this thing is rated to a thousand. Um, yeah, that's really impressive with this watch. So wait, let's set this one to the side and we'll move up to the 39. So looking at 47.5 diameter. Thickness of 15.4 millimeter, lug width 22, lug width is the same on all these at 22, and 6.8 millimeter crown. This is a cool crown too, it's, uh, I would say it's anodized blue, but I'm assuming that's, these are steel, so anodizing is an aluminum process, so perhaps it's uh, PVD coated uh, blue, I'm not sure how they do that, but it's a very cool looking blue color. And I really have not worn this watch because it's a limited edition. Um, just didn't want a chance messing anything up on it. So I actually sell this back to the original owner, uh, Michael, over at Desire68 uh, channel. I don't know if it's Desire68 or if he changed to Desire68 Frogman. But anyway, check out his channel. He'll be uh, showing this watch off soon, I'm sure. 6.8 millimeter crown. Then the new Tuna, the SBBN043, essentially the same diameter. It could be a measurement error, but I got 47.6. Thickness is a little bit thinner at 14.3. Again, the same lug width, 22 and uh, 6.9 millimeter crown. So I will put each of these on wrist. And then we'll check out the loom. I'm really, uh, really looking forward to checking out the loom. And um, I'll throw this one in too. So actually I'll wear, I'll put this one on wrist first. Solar tuna. It's basically a coarse movement, right? Just powered by a capacitor solar uh, cell instead of a quartz uh, battery. Sorry, battery. The battery on that's, I think I already said it, but five-year battery life on these other ones. Alrighty, solar tuna. Also, that has them. Actually, they all have a metal keeper, don't they? Yep. So here we go on my uh, six and a half inch wrist. I have to zoom out here in a moment. Trying to clean up the background a little bit. So, I mean, really, it doesn't look that large on wrist because there's real short distance for the lugs. It's essentially the same. It's just a circle on your wrist. Um, maybe we'll just stay zoomed in. I don't know. Maybe we'll zoom out, too, for all of them. They don't plan everything out here. Okay, so now let's go to the 27. Such a cool watch. Definitely a beast of a watch too. Still doesn't give me the big uh, beastly, beastly feeling of that uh, Ecozilla, but 
definitely a large watch on wrist, but it's not not terribly heavy. That um, loom pip is a little hard for me to see, though. Well, not too bad here, but looking at it by eye, it's uh, not as easy to see if the bezel was, well, not yellow. All right, so let's move up to the 39, which has the old style uh, loom pip here. Uh, they didn't really do much good, did it? So this was a 47.5 case diameter, and um, the black one was a 49.1. Is a 49.1. Oh yeah, I didn't even talk about the kanji date on all these. They all have the kanji date, which is cool. This one's here a little harder to read since it's uh, light blue on a, a darker blue. It has that kind of a stepped dial there. You see it a little easier on this watch. It is white on, is that a blue or black? It looks like a blue date wheel, so that's uh, very cool. It doesn't have that uh, step circle in the middle here anymore. Also, if you look at the SBBN031, which was the previous tuna, uh, similar to this, but instead of saying Patty on the dial there, it said Marine Master. I'm going to see if I can get, uh, get one of those watches in on loan and compare it to this watch here. Anyway, let's get this on wrist, and then we'll check out the loom here. Try not to run too long with this video. So let me know which of these three, well, four watches is your favorite. Let me know if you guys have experienced the tuna yet. Um, this is the actual tuna versus, um, I know there's the baby tuna, there's some automatic versions, and then there's the solar tunas, but uh, these guys are the actual tuna watch. I'll zoom out here. Yeah, I mean, it does look big, but it's supposed to. It's a dive watch. Nice and easy to tell the time on it. This bezel is really loose. Like, really loose. I'm surprised how loose it is. Still can't turn it by one finger, but I don't know how they did that. It's really easy to turn. All right, we'll go back in reverse order. Yeah, this this is a good feeling bezel. Really like that splash of blue then the red minute hand is nice and then I don't think I showed you the there's red ticks on the minute track here or the rehot whatever you want to call it just at the cardinal points 12 9 6 and 3 so anyway all right, and then let's get the black one on wrist, and then we'll get to everyone wants to look at the loom. Definitely going to be a good loom on these. Maybe I'll throw the other watch in too. I don't know. Well, what the heck? I don't know how many watches I can throw in for the loom. Yeah, that's a 300 meter dive watch, isn't it?
yeah, 300 meters. All right, so here is the... Uh, <laughs> I always laugh, man. This, this is just a funny watch to me. It's definitely different. It almost looks smaller because it's black. It looks smaller to me on wrist than uh, this one here, for example, even though it's, was it seven, two and a half millimeters larger? Or is it one and a half? One and a half millimeter larger, 47.5 to 49.1. So, all right, I'm going to pause the video before I get there. If you haven't subscribed already, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Like the video if you liked it. And hit the notification bell if you'd like to see more content like this. Kind of somewhat uh, haphazard, but I don't know. But you should get things planned out in, in some kind of way. So, All right, let me get these set up somehow, and then we'll check out the loom. All right, so top left corner is the 43 in the middle top we have the 39 and then top right we have the 27 bottom left of course is the submariner and then bottom right is the solar tuna um yeah it's hard to pick one for being the brightest i would say the submariner is probably the least uh, but yeah it's not quite as bright as the solar tuna but really um, you can't go wrong with the loom on any of these watches so let's set this one off to the side and the solar tuna will set off to the side Let's look at the SBBN 43 and 39 here on the right. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, loom looks pretty much the same to me. I don't really care for that minute hand on the, on the 43. It looks too much like an hour hand to me. But uh, yeah, it's longer than the other one, but it looks like an hour hand. It's not as easy to differentiate this as the 39 on the right here. Let's take a look at the 27. Hmm, interesting. Definitely very good loom on these watches. And then here's the 39 in my left hand and the 27 on the right. Uh, essentially identical loom. I would say the loom pip is better on the 39 in my left hand. But the handset and the indices are the same. So that will conclude my Seiko Tuna state of the collection, uh, which will be getting reduced here very soon because the patty is leaving. Did enjoy my time with it, but I'm happy to see it going back to uh, the original owner, who I'm sure is uh, very happy to get it back in his collection. So as always, thank you for taking the time. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.